<laughs> what? So today you'll notice that the banana is not in the shop and the Morvair is back in the shop. The reason for that is I have a week to get this ready to go to the Rubicon and one big glaring problem was getting fuel in the tank. If you remember that, it's quite a process. Once this is loaded with gear and ready to go, it's not going to happen. So anyway, today we're going to be working on putting the uh, filler neck on the fuel tank in the Morvair so we can go to Rubicon in a week and clear the shop out for the banana upgrades and repairs. Yay! Howdy howdy, let's get rowdy. So the first step today is a scavenger hunt. We are looking for some EPDM roofing material to make some rubber straps because I'm going to change the way the fuel tank is connected. And we're looking for some band clamps to clamp our fuel hose to the filler neck. And we don't know if any of those things exist in the valley, so it is a scavenger hunt. All right, so the first stop on our scavenger hunt is Skyline Roofing to visit Lizzie's Uncle Adam. Yep. This is actually a roofing company I used to own way back in the day. Uh, Adam and myself were partners. I sold it to him and got into towing. So he says he's got some EPDM for us. So stop number one. This is Adam, the owner of Skyline Roofing. Yeah. He's gonna hook us up with some EPDM today. Some EPDM. We don't have any scraps. I don't want to cut into a new roll. So Adam, what's EPDM? EPDM is, Matt, do you remember? It's ethylene. Rubber, it's rubber roofing membrane. <laughs> yeah. It's like ethylene poly. Oh yeah, look at that one. Poly something. I can't remember. But what is it used? Of work. Well, it's used for roofing. Oh. We do a lot of it in Colorado. Not a lot in southern Utah. Yeah, let me see the higher elevations where people want the snow to melt. So down here in southern Utah, we don't get snow, so we don't do it very often. We're just getting uh, some rubber straps for the. Fuel tank mounting. Hey, lady, you want to help? Oh, okay. We're gonna glue it together and make it a little thicker. We can order some, but we're headed to the Rubicon, so the fuel tank needs to be mounted more, more better. Plenty. Looks like Lizzie won on the straightness cutting. <laughs> Where are we in our scavenger hunt? We're headed to. We're headed to Napa to see if we can get a T-bolt band clamp. We need four of them for the gas filler neck hose. The gear clamps, the gear style clamps don't put enough pressure on. Squeeze this super heavy duty gas hose. Steel wire reinforced. Okay, they start kind of here. <laughs> That's what I need. Perfect. Right there, probably. Work. Bingo. Okay. Thank you much. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Okay, so now next. Does that include our scavenger hunt? No, we've got to go get the laptop oh, yeah, computer. That was added. It was added mid-flight because we've got to do some tuning with the computer. I don't know if we're gonna get it done before Rubicon, but it would be nice if we did. So we're stopping by my house to get the laptop. What do you got there, Lizzie? A computer. From an undisclosed location in New Mexico. <laughs> EPDM. T-bolt band clamp that fits on the gas hose. Some blackjack rubber cement for arts and crafts with the EPDM and a laptop to mess with the tuning on the Morvair. Fantastic. Hey Lizzie. Yes. What's sir? going on? What's going on? And you say, hey. And I say, what? <laughs> what are you doing Lizzie? Measuring these? So we can glue them together to put the gas can on. Is that right? 
on top yeah. of them. So you cut them in strips. Yep. So you layer them to make a nice cushy thing. You got that right. Seen enough. <laughs> you are one of the messiest gluers I've ever seen. <laughs> All over the table. Yeah, sorry about that. Lizzie just cleaned that table. It's a hurtful thing to say. What, try it out? No, but I'm the messiest glory you've ever seen. Okay, so make another one of these, just like that. Trevor, you're being awfully quiet. I got nothing to say about this. You're you're here with Ed on this one. <laughs> it's gonna be two. It's gonna be two and two. Just see the total eclipse of the sun. You are the least messy gluer I've ever seen, Lizzie. So that's the thickness of the rubber strip. It's going to be about a quarter inch thick. That will be adequate. Well, I bent this strap up. I don't know. I think I'm pretty happy with it. Got it all spot well. You just need to kind of clean it up. It's going to go just like this. This goes to the bottom of there so we can tighten it up. And that's going to go to a fixed mount right there. And I just got to add the brackets right there for that. And this one is going to be the opposite, sort of, because of reasons. But we should have this done here in an hour or three. It's from this rubber to that. It'll stretch because it's barely it, oh, less than 10. Well, here's the thing it's got to stretch up like that. Okay, so you can come down a little bit. Okay, Pretty look good. out. I've got to get a, I got a good thing going here. Now I've got, oh my, oh my, oh my. Where's that wrench at? In my hand. You tossed it down here for me to use and cruelly took it away. Ugh. Oh! I don't like that. Did Just we... enough wiggle room. <laughs> no, you're never going to get it out. Yeah, that's why I don't like it. Well, I've got to take it out to do the strap on the other side. In, in, in real life, it's got to come out a couple more times because oh, of, we got to put the sump in it. I know, poly, hydromat, or whatever, but I want a sump because I want the extra gallon that I'm gonna get out of. That's pretty much it. Oh, we got tons of room, like significant amount. All right, okay, so I gotta get that into there. So I think if I tighten it down, it will deform into the correct shape that I need. You know what I mean? Science. Science. Man, the way this is acting, one uh, one strap is enough. Gonna do what? I think it's gonna work good. Only. I don't even need a second strap. Yeah. But we're gonna do one because. Symmetry. How are we really gonna do one? It's all about symmetry. Well, you got it now, you just gotta do, do it again. But it's not the same, it's backwards. <laughs> Alright, so after a massive fight, 
of epic proportions, we've got this tank in. And it's strong enough you can jack it up. Jack into the tank and just jack it up. It goes. It's day four of getting ready to take the Morver on the Rubicon. The list of things that need to be done is getting smaller. It's this side. We got a leak in the cowl that comes inside. Got to figure that out. We need to rotate the tires, put new spark plugs in, take the flag off, mount some sort of spare tire carrier, tank weld. Oh, that's a tab for the tank. That'll just take a second. We're not, we're not going to be welding on the gas tank. It's full of gas. Lizzie is working on a shift boot. It's temporary, but it's going to be fantastic. <laughs> but we want to be pretty happy with that, I guess. Okay, now the I next. I need the piece. bottom. Yeah, so you're gonna want to make. Are we gonna cut this up? Yeah. Okay. So true the true the bottom <laughs> first. You want it trimmed? Probably. There's the pattern that we're following. Is that to scale? The blueprints? No. I don't know. I don't even know if this is the scale. <laughs> is it going over just, just this one? The base is way too big. It's going to be awesome. Beautiful. close. See what I mean? That stops it. So if this came down here like this, and this attached up there like that, why wouldn't that work? There it is. Temporary fix for a permanent problem. Weld on the tank is gone. Tire mount, carrier, spark plugs, rotate tires. Cow leaks. Let's rotate the tires and then we can put it on the ground. We reached out to Trevor Couture of TC Tuned and he somehow linked up with our laptop through magic and technology and he tuned the Morver and uh, it's running so much better now. We've been doing all this stuff on a, on a ratty tune. Who did that? I just picked a bass tune and went with it. <laughs> and it worked, like it worked really well. So good job Trevor. But now we've got to, spoiler alert, we're gonna be taking it back to the dyno and doing some dyno tuning. Um, Trevor's gonna link back up to our computer and help us with that. So we're headed back to Pierce Performance to do some dyno pulls because we've got a new tune on the Morver and we're also gonna be doing some dyno tuning. Um, TC Tuned is gonna be logging into our computer and watching the dyno pulls and helping us make some tweaks. Just getting better and better. Plus we've got the 40s on instead of the 38s this time. We had the... We had the old tires on last time. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. Oh my, that's a change. <laughs> yeah. Are you sure? Yes, I'm positive. Uh-oh. We don't want any pre-ignition while we're flying down the freeway. Yeah, that was the problem I was having was part throttle detonation and uh, there's only so long an engine will put up with that, especially when it starts. I mean, it was pretty bad. Sometimes, some under some conditions, it was pretty bad. We got none now. The, the tune that uh, 
Trevor Couture put on this was, I mean, it solved all the detonation problems. The engine's already running cooler. Oh yeah, you can see it on the gauge. Detonation causes heat. Um, you know, we're not putting that heat into the cooling system now. So we, ha we haven't done a pull yet. So we're still we're still calibrating the dyno because um, we've had all these other problems. So is this froze up now, Trevor? Yeah, it looks like it has. All right, we're playing a we got an Abbott and Costello routine here because there's two Trevors and multiple <laughs> computers. <laughs> all right, well let's just do a poll and see what the numbers are. Let's get a baseline, I guess, to so let that charge. Okay, so. Okay, I'll let you know what happens. Okay. Are we ready? two tick ticks that I heard but that's acceptable okay. awesome I'm very pleased TC tuned stayed with us through our little computer glitches and we've almost got our baseline horsepower back and that's with two sizes larger tire so we think there's another 10 maybe 15 horsepower hiding in tune we're going to do some data logging, which is super boring for most of you. Um, some of you is super exciting. We're going to be data logging, seeing what's going on. And we found out we need a cold air intake. Our intake temperatures were in the 160 plus range, which is unacceptable. We need to get them down. I want to get them down in the 120 range. And uh, so that's something we're going to be working on soon. That's a good weld. Look at that. <laughs> How much welding have you done? <laughs> Not very much. Nah, Hardly at you're all. A have not welded very much my brother just said you have to do this you have to do this you have to do this and for the first maybe couple times I've ever welded he was like right there showing me exactly what to do and uh, I guess it paid off but I haven't welded in probably like three years and it and like I've only welded a couple times in my life <laughs> Tucker don't look at me like that <laughs> I don't know how to weld. Somebody help me weld. 
I've always depended on the kindness of strangers to teach me how to weld. Putting those power ports in. Yeah, we need a way to charge our phones and charge our camera batteries for the trip. So Trevor came in on his day off to do that. All right, so it's Friday. We're going to be leaving in two days for the Rubicon. I got the spare tire carrier installed. We've got the spark plugs in. We've got tire mount carrier we've taken care of the cowl leaks so all I've got is the flag to take off the reason I have that is it's required at Sand Hollow State Park for driving in the dunes so we just leave it on all the time but they're not gonna make us have it on the Rubicon I don't want to drive 500 600 miles it's gonna be over a thousand miles round trip so take that off so this is going to be the real test for like road ability over a thousand miles round trip of highway driving. We're going to find out what kind of fuel mileage it gets. Everybody's wondering what the fuel mileage is. And I always say it's single digits because all they do is work, but we'll figure it out on this trip. I'll give you a number and then uh, you'll be so happy about that. So if we can make this trip, that means that the Morver has passed another critical test to see if it's safe to drive long distances or if it's gonna leave us stranded calling for a tow truck using our AAA. We're not as prepared as we should be. We're more prepared than we were. We're going on the trip no matter what. Thanks for watching.